Hi guys, welcome to the second series that we have put out for this week sharing. I hope that what I have shared with you last week helped to give you a basic understanding of the types of investment product that is available out there, roughly what each of them does, the risk involved, and how they operate. So that now you get a better understanding of the products out there, you will be then able to build a suitable portfolio which is what I'm going to cover today. Okay, so we will first look at how to build a portfolio because like some of my friends ask, hey, Jihawa, there's so many you know, products out there. What exactly am I looking out for? Whether should I go for high-risk product, a mix of some low-risk products? How much percentage should I be looking at? Is there a magic number or ratio to follow? So I'll be going through some of that by first sharing on some of the readings that I usually go to. I think these are really, really good seasoned financial bloggers that has been out there for quite a while, okay? Such as Dr. Wealth, Financial Horse. Yeah, I love their articles and things that they have put out there is definitely a good read. Uh, silly community as well. They have been building up a very big, strong finance uh, community for everyone out there to share the stuff that they learn. Okay, so uh, I'm going to quickly go to one of Financial Horse article about building an all-weather portfolio. Okay, so uh, to give you a bit of background about understanding what does the term all-weather means, it comes up with the idea from what Delio, this uh, investor, has suggested okay he's actually quite a big shot in investing like you had to spend a few hundred million dollars on a table of a dinner with him to get some personal advice okay so you're first buying it by him founder of bridgewater associate okay so basically to weather through your for your asset classes to weather through all year round which is consisting of the four seasons seasons of inflation deflation rising economic growth and declining growth, okay? And along with the inflation and deflation rate, as you can see over here in the matrix. Okay, so he's mentioned that you shouldn't have more than 25% of each of these category. And that will help with an indication of a chart over here, okay? So I won't go through everything in exact detail, but I want to let you have a rough gist of understand of what an all-weather portfolio looks like. It's not too aggressive, it's not too conservative, but it will be enough to bring you through most of the uh, crises out there that you see. Okay, so over here you see stocks, uh, bonds, long-term US bonds, gold, and commodities. Okay, so basically this is a rather good reference point to start with if you clearly have no idea on how to plan out. Like say maybe an example of you have a 10,000 lump sum, you would like to put in to an investing portfolio, this will be a good start to go. Okay, but I would like to say in my own view, uh, there were some things that I don't really like because I think I'm rather an aggressive investor. So things to me like bonds are not really, really interesting. So I adjust my percentage accordingly as of what I will share with you later. Okay, so I think this is a good reference point on how to start with. And you can read on on some of the details that he has written on explaining why you do so and why not. So Financial Horse has also went on to explain on why, how this should be applied in a Singapore context. As you can see, mention of stocks and REITs, uh, bonds, instead of US bonds, you can buy CPF, uh, Singapore Saving Bonds, and things like that. Okay? And this point over here where he's talking about stocks, he brought up a very interesting point about why you shouldn't just keep to Singapore local markets and you should go on to talk, look at markets such as US and China because uh, Singapore market is able to be successful because we has been successful the last 30 years, which is something to think about that maybe when you start off, it's okay to buy some things that you're familiar with, but as you branch out, you might want to look further than Singapore markets. So then he gave his recommendation on how you should achieve this mix. 
and the bonds as well what you can do with your cpf ordinary account or buying singapore saving bonds and purchase of gold which is interesting here because not many people know that gold is actually a good hedge against bad market so as you can see the build up towards covid and in terms of trade war during the last one to two years gold has actually been on the rise and hitting quite a high point high point recently okay so now that you have a rough understanding of how a all weather portfolio or how a portfolio diversification should look like i would just like to show you an example of what i can find on stash away so personally i use a stash away to get access into us markets why because i don't like uh, how the exposure of commission fees are like with my broker it's simply too high and it's really hard for me to try to buy a few shares and be contented so I say, why not? Uh, stash away looks good, and I will just try it out. So currently, right now, I'm on the twenty percent risk, which is on the higher risk side. And you can see this is the um portfolio that it has assigned to me. Look at the a difference in percentage. Okay, as you look at the less risky alert over here. So how do they get a percentage of 20%? It's through the algorithm. They it's telling me that there's a twin, there's a chance that I might lose 20% of what I invested. So if I put in 10K in an event that things that doesn't turn out well, I might lose like 2,000. So as you can see, the difference mainly comes from the uh, increase of equity. Okay. And uh, for, for 6.5, that's actually very little. Okay, and it's not even US stocks. There's no US stocks at all. Whereas most of it has been turned to bonds and corporate bonds, things of lower risk. Okay, but definitely lower risk means lower return. So I think these two spectrum that I present you over here gives you a good idea of how an aggressive portfolio should look like and how a less, a more conservative portfolio that enables you to say, look, I'm not ready to lose so much money. I'm contented, you know growing my money like that yeah so this is how it should look like if you choose to do this manually okay so what robo advisor does is it does everything for you just have to answer a few questionnaire they will decide and determine if you are risk adverse or you are aggressive investor then they will suggest this money to put they will even draw a nice matrix of a projection for you to do to see like 10 20 30 years down the road how much will you be getting but nonetheless, there are also many fantastic robo advisors out there. It's just one of the many that is out there in the market. So having a rough idea of how an aggressive and a conservative portfolio look like, I'm just going to the last part where I'm just going to share my portfolio. So on top of robo advisors that I've been getting, I have been looking at stocks as well just mainly Singapore stocks. For my US stocks, I leave it for my robot advisor to do its magic and for the gold commodities as well. So I also started off ETF by buying into the Singapore uh, index. But personally, to me, I think it's not a right investment which I will show you what I'm going to do when I rebalance my portfolio later. Because to me, in terms of return-wise, if you were to buy ETF from other markets, such as the US or China, gives you much better returns compared to uh, Singapore's market. Yeah, uh, bonds as well and insurance such as endow endowment plan. You know, when you are young and you are going by along the road, there will be you know insurance agent asking you if you have time. And back then, I didn't have much financial knowledge, so I think if it's guaranteed and I don't really need the money for any use so why not so it's been there la. i'll be just waiting to get the sum matured and i'll probably not get anymore that's where you got to do some rebalancing okay so moving on to next year this is my target okay so i'm probably gonna switch out my etf to go once my etf break even where i don't lose any more money and where my insurance is probably matured 
uh, I might be rebalancing it into the stocks as well and more into the robo advisor. So basically for my portfolio, I'm looking at about five asset classes and some of it are risk adverse, things like bonds and gold. There's more stable and I like to hold a bit of cash as well in terms of if there's any great investment opportunity, like a stock is very undervalued and it's the right time to buy and that will be the time to deploy the cash. Lah. Yeah, I will share more on stocks and REITs eventually as we get to understand how our portfolio should be like and how we should be arranging our asset class like together so that you can have a rough sensing. Then in each asset class, if you were to pick and choose on your own, we will then go into the specifics on how I look at uh, stocks, on bonds or some things like that. Yeah, but I hope this gives you a good indication of how to build up your portfolio and looking towards your aggressive side or your conservative side. Yeah, just play around with the percentage, but it shouldn't be too much on one end, you see. Yeah, so that's all to for today. I hope you get uh, to learn as much as I do from all your feedbacks. I uh, hope to see you all next week. Thank you.